How you doing guys, welcome to another video. It's still on topic five, energetic thermochemistry. And in this one, we look at what is calorimetry. Let's go. Topic 5.1, what is calorimetry? We'll look at energy changes in reactions and then we talk about some typical calorimetry experiments. The IB understandings and applications focus around calorimetry experiments, which we'll talk about. There is an important assumption that I need to explain to you that we, when we do a calorimetry experiment, we say that the solution weighs the same as it did at the start and the same as it did at the end, even if we start to dissolve some chemicals into it. We'll touch on that a bit later. So here's an example where we have one mole of sulfur trioxide plus one mole of water forms one mole of sulfuric acid. And in the process, it releases 129.6 kilojoules of energy. We need to calculate the energy released when only half a kilogram of sulfur trioxide reacts with water. So the way we do a question like this is we start off by finding the number of moles of the chemical. In this case, the sulfur trioxide, mass over molar mass. So we work out the number of moles of the chemical that we've got. In this case, it's the sulfur trioxide and we have exactly 12.4 moles of the chemical, 12.5 moles. Now what we do is we go back to the equation and the equation says that for every one mole of sulfur trioxide that reacts with water, it releases 129.6 kilojoules. Now we don't have one mole, we've got a lot more. We've got 12.5. So we say 12.5 moles of SO3 releases X kilojoules. So we've just set up a nice little ratio using the equation. So we've got one over 12.5 equals 129.6 over X. We can cross multiply and solve for X and X will be our energy. How much energy is released in this reaction? And in this case, it's 16, 1,618 kilojoules. Now doing significant figures, I'd probably want to change that to three. So I have 1.62 times 10 to the three kilojoules. Another example. Here we have a step in the Oswald process. We have four moles of ammonia plus five moles of oxygen form six moles of water and four moles of nitrogen monoxide. Calculate the energy released when 50 grams of ammonia reacts with 35 grams of oxygen. Now this should start ringing some bells. We've got the masses of both of the reactants. So this is a limiting excess question. So to complete this one, I first need to work out which one is limiting and which one is excess. So I should follow the process for that sort of calculation. I need to work out the number of moles of both of the reactants. So in this case, it's mass over molar mass for both ammonia and the oxygen. So for the ammonia, I have 2.93 moles. Now I've got to also work out the number of moles of the oxygen because I need the number of moles to work out the limiting reagent. So dividing by the molar mass, I've got my number of moles of oxygen, which is 1.09 mole. Now don't make the mistake here of thinking that oxygen is limiting. We need to divide by the coefficient. So we divide the ammonia by four and we divide the oxygen by five. This allows us to compare the two numbers and I've done these in blue specifically because we don't use these numbers, they're just for comparison. The smaller one will be the limiting reagent. And in this case, the limiting reagent is oxygen. So when we do the rest of the calculation, we need to use oxygen the limiting reagent. So what I want to do now is set up a ratio. In this case, our ratio is five moles of oxygen releases 908 kilojoules. So for every five moles of oxygen, we release that much energy. I don't have five moles, I've got 1.09 moles. So 1.09 moles releases X kilojoules of energy. So I've got the exact same process as before. I've set up a ratio, cross multiply, solve for X. My X here is 198 kilojoules and that's released. It's released that energy because it's an exothermic relationship. Okay, so let's have a look at how we would measure energy changes in the lab. We measure energy changes by a simple set of apparatus known as a calorimeter. And what we can do here is we measure the change in temperature of water and then if we know how much of the fuel we've burnt, we can start to work out the heat of combustion. So we might have something like a spirit burner which has a fuel in it and we can set that alight. We would have a tin can or some kind of conducting material which has a known mass of water in it. 
And what we can do is we can calculate the temperature change in that water as we're burning the fuel. We can also then work out the mass of the fuel before and the mass of the fuel after, and that will allow us to determine the enthalpy change, the delta H. Now this kind of experiment has a number of different problems. It's got a lot of errors. There's a lot of heat lost to the system here and into the environment. We one, we're not insulating it very well. However, if we have a more sophisticated bit of apparatus, like a solution calorimeter, this has inbuilt insulation. It's got all of the same pieces of equipment that at the more simple calorimeter would have, but this time there's a lot less heat loss. We've got insulation of the water, more of the energy will be transferred to the water rather than to the environment. If we've got something where we have reactants that are uh, Oh, fuck me. If we have something where the reactants or the products are gas, we can use a bomb calorimeter and that keeps those reactants and products inside the little container and allows them to distribute the heat to the water effectively. So here's an example of a calorimetry experiment. We have 100 centimeters cubed of water, it's poured into a polystyrene cup and then 5.2 grams of ammonia are measured out and dissolved into the water. We have our before and after temperatures and then we also need to consider some of the important assumptions for this. So one of the important assumptions is that all of the ammonium chloride in this case has dissolved. Will it? Maybe, maybe not, but we need to make that assumption that it all has dissolved. The other important assumption is that even after we have dissolved all of the ammonium chloride, the mass of the water remains 100 grams. Now, one centimeter cubed of water is equal to one gram. So we assume that the mass of the water has stayed constant. It hasn't increased, but in fact, it probably has by a little bit. The density has been changed, but we need to make an assumption that it stays the same. We're asked to determine the enthalpy, the delta H of the dissolution or the dissolving of the ammonium chloride. So what we do here is we first need to work out the number of moles of ammonium chloride that we added the number of moles of NH4Cl. So it's important that you get that formula right as well. Mass over molar mass. We've been given the mass 5.2 grams and we can calculate the molar mass to find the number of moles. The molar mass of ammonium chloride is 53.5. That gives us a number of moles equal to 0.0972 moles. Now what I need to do is work out the amount of energy that had been absorbed in this case, because the temperature went down, absorbed by the water. But when I do this, I don't want to have a negative number. So I use Q equals MC delta T. Our mass is 100. Our specific heat capacity of water is 4.18. And then I just want to find the temperature change. I don't want this to be a negative number because there's no such thing as a negative energy. So I can work out the energy change in the water and I want to convert that to kilojoules. So I convert that to kilojoules by dividing by a thousand. Now to calculate the delta H, the formula for delta H is energy in kilojoules divided by moles. So in this case, we've got our energy, this time it was absorbed, we've got our number of moles, so we put those over each other to determine the delta H. So we have 1.34 divided by 0.0972, which will give us our delta H for the dissolution of ammonium chloride, which is 13.8 kilojoules per mole. The unit is very important. Now, because this absorbed energy, it was an endothermic reaction, I'd also want to show the examiner that I know what I'm talking about, so I'd probably put a plus in front of it. It's endothermic because it's absorbed energy and the temperature went down. Now, the literature value is 15.2 kilojoules per mole. Obviously, we're pretty close, but we do have some errors. What are some of the errors? Well, maybe we had some heat loss to the environment. Maybe um, we didn't measure something correctly. Maybe our thermometer had some issues. What are the assumptions, though? The assumptions was that all the NH4Cl dissolved and that the mass of the water remained constant. Okay, a second one. Delta H of combustion of a fuel ethanol. 
So again, we've been given a whole bunch of information and we need to make sense of that information to determine the delta H of combustion. So what we can do here is first of all, work out the energy absorbed by the water. We had 150 grams of water. It absorbed a whole heap of energy from the burning of the fuel. So I can calculate the energy change in the water. So we have 150 multiplied by the specific heat capacity of water, 4.18, multiplied by the energy change in the temperature change. In this case, the temperature went up. So this is most likely to be an exothermic reaction. Again, I can work it out in joules, but I really want to find it in kilojoules. Kilojoules is the one that I'll use to write the equation, uh, to write the delta H. So 16.4 kilojoules of energy has been released. Now what we need to do is find the number of moles of the fuel. In this case, we're using ethanol, so we need to know the formula. CH3, CH2, OH. Check your topic 10 if you can't remember that. The mass will be the change in mass of the spirit burner. Now, you could have done this calculation separately. I've chosen to do it all in one just to reduce any chances of making a mistake. And so I can work out my number of moles by dividing by the molar mass. So the number of moles was 0.0228 mole. Now, just like before, I've got to the situation where I've got the energy and I've got the mole. So my delta H of combustion is just equal to the energy divided by the mole. Remember that the energy must be in kilojoules. So I divide those two numbers and then I can work out that my delta H of combustion would be equal to 721 kilojoules per mole. Now, this is an exothermic reaction because it has released energy, so I need to put the negative in front. Don't forget that tiny little step. All right, some top tips for volume three. Make sure you understand that assumption about the water, that it remains constant. Even if we dissolve something in it, it will always remain the same. And Q equals MC delta T, a lot of students always miss that one. So make sure you're on top of it. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.